Good day, my name is Chantal Adams. I am the student counselor at the Western Cape campus. And today I'd like us to engage in a conversation around how to prepare yourself to apply for a master's or doctoral degree, either at UNISA or at an external organization. I hope you find today's discussions meaningful. Um, you can make some notes, you can download this recording and watch it again and again. Make sure you've ticked all the boxes when you apply and good luck with your master's or doctoral application. I completed a Bachelor of Arts in Health Sciences and Social Services at UNISA and I then went on to apply and register for my uh, B-Psych equivalent training program and trained as a registered counsellor. In the final year of the B-Psych program, I secured a six-month internship, but in that year, I also applied for admission to a master's program at UCT. At this time, I was very naive, little knowledge about how to go applying. I didn't know much about reading up about a supervisor or matching your focus areas to the supervisor's focus areas. And I was basically alone in the dark, fumbling my way through the entire application process. It did end successfully. I did complete a master's in social sciences at UCT. And 10 years later, I'm considering applying for a doctoral program. The process for me, when I reflect back now, is completely different as I'm more knowledgeable and I'm more aware of the processes involved and the tick boxes you need to check in order to get yourself shortlisted and into a program. And because of all this knowledge and experience, I hope that you can benefit from it. And therefore, I'd like to share this information with you today. Today, we're going to look at a number of topics. Firstly, we'll go through a checklist. In order to ensure that you get shortlisted for a master's or doctoral program, you need to tick a number of boxes. So we're going to look at what are the boxes you need to tick in order to get shortlisted for a program. We'll also look at where to begin. So we'll speak about the application and registration processes, as well as the admission criteria. We will also look at the research focus areas so that you ensure that you align your topic with the supervisory capacity of the university and the research focus areas of the university. We'll also look at a number of frequently asked questions and pitfalls that you need to avoid. I developed a personal checklist. For me, it was very important and I needed to clarify what are my career goals and how does a master's or doctoral program link to my career goals that I have in mind, whether it be career goal A, plan A, plan B or plan C, and do I have a plan B and C in place and what do those look like? So, for example, my initial career idea was I wanted to train as an educational psychologist. But when I started working at the Counseling and Career Development Unit at UNISA Para Western Cape, I learned a lot more about what the field of psychology entails and what the requirements are to train as an educational psychologist. I also got a better understanding of myself and got to learn about my own strengths and weaknesses and realize that if my plan for to train as an educational psychologist does not work out, my second option would be to train as a career counselor um, and register with the Health Professions Council of South Africa as a counselor. And if that did not work out, the final plan was to go into the field of research. So I had to be really clear about the goals I had in mind, because whatever I studied had to align with either one of these career goals. Another item on my checklist was I needed to understand how my undergraduate degree links to my honours and links to a possible either postgrad diploma or master's degree and possible doctorate. It's very important to understand the difference between a coursework and research masters and also to have clarity around whether the master's program you choose is linked to professional registration with an external body. For example, if you complete a master's in clinical psychology, 
you can register as a clinical psychologist upon meeting additional requirements and passing a board exam, and you will have professional registration with the HPCSA. If I, however, complete a master's in social sciences, which is a full research degree, I will not secure registration with the HPCSA and I will not secure any professional membership. So it's good to understand what is a coursework degree. It would usually include your dissertation or a mini thesis together with modules that you need to complete. A full research based master's is a full dissertation that excludes coursework. It's then also very important to identify a number of institutions with whom you will apply. Do not put all of your eggs in one basket. It's very important. Remember that space is always an issue at every university. So if you have plan to apply for a master's or doctoral program, ensure that you apply to more than one institution. This means that you also need to gather information around these various institutions regarding the admission requirements, the application process, and the registration processes. So it is a good idea to make contact with the department secretary in the um, subject field that you wish to study in. So for example, if I'm interested in a psychology doctoral program, I will contact the department of psychology at the institution I wish to register for, so either UWC, UCT, or Stellenbosch, and I will check with the admissions office what is the requirements, check if I meet the requirements, check what the application um, dates are, as well as registration dates as well. It's also very important that you need to understand and have a good, thorough knowledge of the research focus areas of inst each institution, within the department that you're wanting to study in. So if I'm wanting to do a doctoral degree in psychology, I will need to have a look at the university webpage, have a look at the Department of Psychology, have a look at the existing research that is being conducted, um, as well as the focus areas, um, because your topic will need to align with the existing focus areas of the institution in order to ensure that you are shortlisted. So remember, the university has to ensure that they have a supervisor that is either an expert in your topic or expert in your research methodology that you intend to use. And that is what they use in order to select the candidates for the program. You can identify at least two qualifications to apply for at each, each institution. So make sure that you list in study option one and study option two. Um, and also understand the application processes, the payments involved, the registration processes and dates. And double check and make sure that the qualification you select to apply for either links or does not link to professional registration with an external body. The master's and doctoral application site is quite useful and easy to navigate. On the left hand side of the page, you'll see a number of topics that starts with what's new for 2023. Um, so each year you need to check the application dates because the, the application dates change each year. Also, and most importantly, outlines the research focus areas. And when you apply for a master's program, you almost most likely need to submit a research proposal or research intent document that needs to outline your topic, your um, research focus area, the methodology or method of analysis that you'll be using. And you need to ensure that your topic aligns with the research focus areas of the university to ensure that you get shortlisted for a program. Um, it also in contains information around the qualifications that we do have on offer, information around how to apply for a student number and apply for admission. And it also explains the application approval process and how the university goes about selecting successful students. And then it has important information around plagiarism, which is very important to every university. The policies and procedures um, form that you'll need to be familiar with when you are a master's student. And then also the recognition of prior learning. Very important is to understand 
the application process at each university. So if you apply to UNISA, the application process is explained. You need to apply for a student number if you don't already have one. If you studied previously with UNISA, you will use your existing student number and simply apply for the change of qualification. So you will apply to change from a postgraduate diploma or an honors to a master's degree. So you will apply for admission and upload your necessary compulsory documents. The application site will stipulate which documents are required for admission. Every university will have its own application dates, its own um, application process and procedures. So wherever you're thinking of applying with, you need to check that university's web page, check that you've got the application information correct, the dates, the registration information, um, and processes so that you don't miss the application and ensure that you tick all the correct boxes. A lot of students have questions or uncertainties around how do I get selected for a master's or doctoral program. The admission criteria at UNISA, they will accept applications based on the following. Number one, whether you meet the admission requirements, your suitability or viability of your intended research. So that needs to be very clearly explained in your research proposal or research intent document that you will submit when you apply. You will attach that to your application. Whether you are applying for a master's or doctoral program, that will be the process to follow. They will also check the adequate supervisory capacity and research expertise in the discipline or department. So they will look at your topic and your research methodology and check, does this align with the university's focus areas? Do we have a supervisor that is expert in either your topic or your methodology, the discipline or the subject field? An approved selection procedure that is in line with UNISA's policy and equality di and diversity um, document. And then always, most importantly, um, I'm going to emphasize, ensure that your research proposal, which is usually a requirement for admission to a master's and doctoral program, ensure that it aligns with the research focus areas. So when you're considering applying for a master's, there's a lot of foundation work that needs to be done before you submit an application. You first need to spend time investigating each university, checking out each university's research focus areas, then doing reading in terms of what is the current um, research that has happened in this field within the last five years, and then identify how are you going to fill these gaps or gap in the knowledge field. And so when you're putting your proposal together, it needs to be a highly structured, targeted um, document that will get you shortlisted as a candidate for a master's or doctoral program. Every university will have a list of research focus areas for each department for UNISA the College of Accounting Sciences, Agriculture, Economic and Management Sciences, Education, Human Sciences, Law, Science, Engineering, Technology, and the Graduate School of Business Leadership. They each have their own unique list of research focus areas and outlines the prospective supervisor as well as possible topics. Um, to every university will have, should have the same kind of um, information available to you. So depending on your subject field, you will visit the uni university webpage, check out the webpage for the department that you're wanting to focus on. So if you're wanting to um, pursue a master's in IT, you would visit Stellenbosch, UWC, UCT, UNISA's webpage, check out the Department of Information Technology and have a look at the research focus areas. If you struggle to navigate the websites of the various institutions, um, they will always have a secretary or contact center, contact number or office number, administrative support staff number that you can contact. And so make contact with those people in order to um, get the information you need so that you um, get a proposal together. And then we also have a master's and doctoral brochure that you'll find very useful and explains everything that we've been speaking about today, the process of applying, the process of registering, um, choosing your topic and all the information surrounding copyright and plagiarism and the important documents required for master's and doctoral applications. 
This is just a quick outline of what you will find on the uh, Frequently Asked Questions web page on the Masters and Doctoral website. Um, and it looks at the process of applying for admission, recognition of prior learning. So if you have work experience and you want credits for years of work experience, 10 to 15 years plus experience, then you can check out the RPL information as well. After applying for admission, it explains to you what steps need to be taken. So if you apply for admission, you first need to get selected for a program and be given an offer to study. And if that is successful, you will then register. So there are specified application dates at each university and then also different registration dates. So you need to just be clear on both. Those are two different sets of processes and check that you have the correct dates for each process. Then it's also important information around cancellations of studies, exemptions, students for disabilities, the MND, the research examination process. So when you get to the end of your dissertation or thesis or your master's, you the process outlined in terms of examining and um, giving you feedback. And then the escalation procedures, some bursary and funding information, and the contact information should you get stuck anywhere along the along the process some pitfalls that you need to watch out for in order to ensure that your application for a master's or doctoral program is successful number one is to visit the college of graduate studies web page and make use of their resources they have a lot of resources around how to put together a research proposal what are the subtopics in the research proposal and what you need to focus on they also offer a lot of support in terms of the um, co conducting the research. They, con they host workshops on data analysis, methodologies, quantitative versus qualitative. So there's a lot of support that the College of Graduate Studies offers. So one of the pitfalls would be to not make use of the resources available, um, being ill prepared, having, having not done any research or reading done in your subject field, um, reading is very important to understand what is happening in your subject field, how and what types of gaps you're wishing to fill, and your research intent document or your research proposal should outline this. Time management being ineffective. Think about what apps or how you're going to manage your time effectively. Not being aware of the quantitative or qualitative research tools and software available. So always check out each university will have software available for its masters and doctoral students that you can use free of charge in order to do your data analysis. Inappropriate reference lit letter writers. So when you apply for a masters or doctoral program, they will ask you to submit reference letters from two or three um, important people who are able to comment on your ability um, to your, your ability to perform your expertise in the expertise in the knowledge field. So think carefully about who you're going to select as your referees. Incomplete applications, double check, triple check, um, double triple check, and ensure that you've ticked all the boxes. Every university will have an application checklist for masters and doc doctoral students. So ensure that you tick all the boxes. Lack of funding information, always make sure if you're ready to apply for a master's or a doctoral program that you are ready with the funding information so that you know how you're going to finance your studies and then only applying to one university. So as we've discussed earlier in the checklist, apply to as many universities as possible and choose two study options at each university. And then also, understanding the professional bodies, the external bodies and the professional registration and understanding whether your qualification links to professional registration or not. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope that you found the information today useful. I've included some links where you can schedule an online appointment to speak to any of our counselors. I've also included the contact details for the Western Cape Student Counselor at the Paddock Campus in Cape Town. That's myself, Chantal Adams, the email address adamscl at unisa.ac.za. And you're welcome to reach out to me or to schedule an online session. If you just want me to call you, you can just send me an email with your contact number and a date and time and I will phone you back. And with that, I'd like to say thank you so much for participating.
Goodbye.